I've had this portable power system running on my workbench for some time. I got it on eBay in a non-working condition and repaired it. Unfortunately, one of the cells seems to always run itself down flat for no reason. I don't want to tear the pack apart and troubleshoot because that would break up the spot welds. I just want to use it. The cell analyzer that I have connected to it shows the cells are almost 100 millivolts out of balance. Cell number one is the one that always seems to run down the worst of all of them. I've tried using the cell balancer computer and it does work very well, but it's a waste of a device. So in order to avoid tearing this unit apart and probably recycling the cells, I'm going to install an active balancer permanently on this portable power system and see if I can use that to correct the problem. I have three or maybe four of these active balancers that I purchased just out of curiosity. This one here is a little expensive, but it has a pretty high balancing current. This is the smallest one I have, and that's the one I'm going to try first. Active balancers don't place a resistor across the high cell. Instead, they take the high cell current and put that into the other cells. So they redistribute power inside the pack. This can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. In general, lithium ion cells cannot be balanced in the middle of the charge or discharge curve. If you try to do that, you're just chasing your tail. Of course, there are exceptions. If the cells are so far out of balance that it's that obvious, say a half a volt away or 500 millivolts, then of course you could certainly start balancing ahead of time. But as a matter of routine, you should not attempt to balance in the middle of charge or discharge. Now this battery pack is a 3S lithium ion pack using 18650 cells. And there's something wrong with cell group 1. I don't know what it is. And I don't want to tear the pack apart. It could be a bad cell and they're shorting out or just causing a discharge. It could be a problem with the electronics, but I happen to like this power system and I want to keep using it. I do not want to tear it apart. I've had it apart multiple times, but really I just want to use it now and I don't want to troubleshoot anymore. I did try normal BMS out of curiosity. This is a battery management system. It has active balancing and battery protection. So it's a battery protection circuit. It has high voltage and low voltage cutout, and it has overcurrent protection. I assume that would mean short circuit protection. It also has active balancing. But I only bought it out of curiosity and I really didn't expect it to do anything for the portable power system. And indeed, I don't think it did. And I'm not too worried about it. I'll use it for something else. When you have a cell that has a consistent imbalance with the others, in theory, an active balancer should be helpful. Although I'm not a user of battery management systems, I don't really need them. I use a lot of lithium ion cells and I do not use an active balancer on them if I can help it. I'm very curious about these little boards. They started popping up on eBay and I really want to try one just see what it does. This one has little LEDs on it, if the camera would focus. It's very small and it can handle four cells. I'm only going to be using three. This particular balancing board says it can do two, three, or four cells. Well, I need four cells, so that'll be fine. A one and a half amp bouncing current is actually really impressive. What I don't like is it says the voltage difference between adjacent cells needs to be 100 millivolts. Actually, that's a little high. I'd rather be 30 millivolts. It says that it'll stop bouncing when it's less than 30 millivolts. But I already bought it and I want to give it a try. And here's some diagrams showing how to connect the cells as well as what the lights do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a plug to it. It looks like this. So I can attach it to the balance header on my portable power system which I added at an earlier date. But I'm also going to connect one of these. This is a JST XH plug because I want to be able to attach my other battery computer at the same time as this and watch it work. In other words, I want to be able to verify that it's actually doing something useful. It won't cost too much more to attach this plug now, and it might come in handy later. Connecting any kind of balance header is quite easy, but it can be rather convoluted to understand. So I'm going to show really quickly here how to hook up a 3-cell balance connector to a battery pack. So I'm going to start by drawing three batteries in series. Everybody knows if you're dealing with batteries, if you put them in series, that builds up the voltage. So I made a rudimentary drawing here to show you three cells and they're all in series or they're ready to be put in series. Now I've added the positive and negative 
so you can see which side of the battery is positive and negative. Now let's assume these are lithium ions, maybe 18650s, and you put them in series to get the full voltage, which is right around 10 to 12 volts. And there you go, 10 to 12 volts. They're in series. But what if you want to check each individual cell? That's actually dirt simple. Your first wire is always going to be the most negative part of the pack. So in that case, it's usually the black wire. However, be careful. Some of these have their wires on wrong. This plug is correct. It has a positive or red wire at the most positive part of the pack. You actually start with the most negative, which is going to be this cell right here. Or I should say this wire. So this is the most negative. This one here next in line is the second one, third one, and finally the positive of the pack. So to connect your balance lead, you would start at the most negative end of the pack, which is right here. You attach a wire. Then you jump over to the other side of that cell, and now you have a plus and minus junction. That's going to be another wire. And this wire can me measure the negative end of this battery and the positive end of this battery. So some of the wires are doing double duty. And to do your next wire, you just jump right over, attach another wire. And you jump right over, now you're at the most positive part of the pack, which is the red wire. Attach another wire, and that's why you have four wires instead of three when you have three batteries. Now this board is very nice, it's very tiny, and yet it can handle four cells. I only need three. So in my case, my connections would be zero volts, which is another way of saying ground or negative. So it would be right here. And then you have B1, which really is just saying the first battery is connected over these two terminals. It's a little bit ambiguous, but you just run the numbers up. B2 is going to be this wire here and B3 will be this wire here, which is the most positive part of the pack. B4 is not going to be used because we don't have four batteries. We only have three. And this particular board says you can use it with three batteries or even two batteries, which is one of the reasons why I bought it. Here's an extremely common JSTXH plug, which is found all the time in the RC hobby. I will be getting into the RC hobby again soon and hope to make some videos about it. I've seen a lot of these plugs, and this is what they look like. Usually they have a red wire and the rest are black, although it can vary. But if you lay this plug down, on the left is the most negative wire, which is going to be right here. The second wire, the third wire, and the red wire is going to be right here. So that's one wire, two, three, four. This plug has four wires. The red wire is this one right here. So that's the most positive part of the pack. This is the most negative part. Now I'm going to parallel an additional plug on here there's going to be two plugs but it doesn't make any difference if I put 10 of these plugs on the wiring is exactly the same and the only problem is of course the more wires you add in parallel the harder it is to get them soldered onto the board most people would not be doing this type of setup but if you want to add multiple plugs you can do that just be careful how you hook them up now I'm going to attach the wires and I'm going to start by tinning the circuit board Okay, this is the most negative part of the pack at zero volts. So all the most negative wires go there. Again, I'm paralleling two plugs on. Normally you wouldn't do this, but it really makes no difference. And now this is the other end of the first cell. And I'm using a lot of solder because I have multiple wires here. And there's the most positive point of the pack. Going back to the diagram again, got all the wires hooked up. Zero volts, ground, or the most negative part of the pack is right here. That would correspond with this area here. Your next wire over is B1. That completes the circuit for battery 1, so you can now monitor this one battery. Battery 2 only requires an additional wire, because you're using this wire also. So that's this wire here, B2. Battery 3, or B3, is the most positive point of the pack. It's also the third cell. So now this completes the circuit for the third cell. Now you can measure at these two points here a single cell using two wires 
if I want to measure the cell behind it, I come over here to these two wires. So it's very handy. It allows you to have a lot of measuring going on and minimize the number of wires that are actually required. I'm now going to give this balancing board a try, active balancing board. And the battery pack itself will be attached here because I already have a balance lead on it. It looks just like this. This wire here I'll use occasionally to attach another computer to, a battery monitoring computer that has a display on it so I can see what is the battery doing and is it still out of balance. Because otherwise the only feedback I have is the LED lights on this board and that's not enough really. Okay, there's the active balancing board plugged in. You can see that the green LED on the left there is actually blinking and that's simply because I don't have a 4 cell pack, I have a 3 cell and it's basically telling me that the 4th cell cannot be seen. When I plugged it in, I saw the lights go on for a moment, so I believe this device is ready to work. Unfortunately, it will only balance when the cells go up to 100 millivolts out of balance, and right now I'm at 97 millivolts, so I guess that's not enough for it to start working. I really wish it was a, a lower number, but that's how they made this board work. And there's a look at my battery computer, 96 millivolts out of balance. You can see cell number one is extremely low, and it creeps up over time it gets worse and worse so I'm hoping this new balancing board will solve the problem. For me this is just an experiment I normally don't use a BMS or any active balancers but this is very very interesting the way these boards work and I really want to give them a try and a battery pack that's always low in a particular cell group is certainly a good way to try one out. So there's not much to do now but just let the board sit there and see if it does anything. If it does I'll be very interested to see how good the balancing is. If it doesn't, I guess I'll just try a different one since I have two or three others I could try. I have a few more videos of this type on the way. I hope this particular video helps someone. Thanks for watching and see you later.